Hey, GED students, this one is a great example of how you guys will study and study and study basics for a long time, like, for example, fractions, and then you will get to the GED test and the type of questions that they ask about fractions on the non-calculator section are just not what you'd expect at all. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this, and I assure you, breathe through it, because it's actually way easier than it looks, okay? So question says, what values of the variable would make the expression x minus 9 over the quantity of x plus 2 times the quantity of x minus 11 undefined in the real numbers. And you might say to me, Kate, you didn't teach me anything really about fractions in unit zero. Why is this even on there? And I'm going to tell you, this is an application of two concepts that we did look at. So one of them is what it means to be undefined. We actually talked about that when we talked about perfect squares and their roots. So let's remember what it means for something to be undefined. It literally means there's no answer. You can't really simplify it. I'm going to put answer in quotation marks like I like to do because you guys... You guys have a different meaning for answer than we do. But basically, I can't simplify it and get an answer in the real numbers, like a number that I'm familiar with. Now, later in math, uh, you'll learn about other types of numbers beyond the real numbers. But uh, for now, on the GED, those are the only kinds of numbers we have. So if I say it's undefined in the real numbers, it just basically means I don't have a way to answer this with the current number system I'm using, okay? Okay. And so that being said, again, you might say, well, again, Kate, you didn't teach me anything about fractions, so I don't know what makes a fraction undefined. You only taught me about what makes a square root undefined, that square roots can't be negative. And I say, actually, yes, I did. When we did the calculator lesson, you did something interesting. I asked you to take a number and divide by zero. And do you remember what happened when you divided by zero? The answer you got was an error in your calculator. It said you had to divide by zero error. And the reason why your calculator gave you an error is your calculator was hollering, I don't have a way to answer when you divide by zero. The answer is undefined. Your calculator, there's no definition for the problem that you were putting in there. It had no way to answer it. So same thing here. That's the key. And remember, fraction bar means the same as divide. So basically, I'm dividing by this whole ugly thing here, okay? So if there's a way to make that whole ugly bottom equal zero, then this expression is going to be undefined. So let's write that down, you guys. I'm going to take a little longer than I usually do on this problem because I think you guys really need to understand this, okay? So if you can make the denominator zero, there's no real answer for this. It's an undefined expression. It's basically nonsense. We can't divide by zero. Um, and so if you make that sucker equal zero, well done. Now, you might say, Kate, I don't know how to make that equal zero. That's algebra. Those are x's. This is way too hard. Guys, Guys, remember, x is just some mystery number. So if I'm like to put a number in for x and it makes that bottom equal zero, well, <laughs> guess what? This whole thing would be undefined. And you say, well, what do I put in? Well, hello, they gave you some numbers to try, okay? But I have a really big clue for you. Look at what's there, x plus two. This is a factor. See how it's in parentheses? This whole x plus 2 is multiplying by this whole x minus 11. And we know that when you multiply two numbers, let's go back to really simple numbers like, hey, um, I don't know, if I took 5 and I wanted to multiply it to something to make it equal 0, well, the only number that's going to do that is 0. Well, what if it was on the other side? Like I had five here and I wanted to make it equal zero. What would I have to multiply it by? Again, zero. So if I can turn either one of these guys into zero, either one of these big ugly things that are multiplying into zero, it will zero out the entire bottom of the fraction. So let's think about that. Uh, let's think about just x plus two. How could I turn x plus two into zero? Well, right, we zero out a number with its additive 
inverse. Oh, look at us hitting the uh, unit zero again. That's from lesson four. Our opposites are additive inverses. The opposite of two is negative two. So if I were to take negative two and add it to two, you know, I go down two and then up two, I'm going to end back right where I started at zero. So negative two would definitely turn the denominator into zero. Take a look at that, negative two. And then how about the other answer? Well, look at x minus 11. How could I get that to zero out? Well, I already have a minus 11, aka a negative 11. So I could have the additive inverse of that, positive 11. And of course, 11 minus 11 would give me a zero. And look at that. 11. Now careful, the 9 is just there to trick you. It absolutely does not matter what's on the top. We're allowed to take 0 and divide it. Like I can do 0 divided by 17, or the way I prefer to write it, 0 divided by 17. That's a totally legit, legit answer. That would be just 0. That's not undefined. That's a number. 0 is a number. But when the zero is on the bottom, that's when my calculator will freak out. My math teacher will freak out. Anybody who knows about math will freak out. Okay, so it's just the denominator that um, if we turn it into zero, we'll make this entire expression be nonsense. It'll make it be undefined. And so the correct answer here is B. It's B. Okay, so I talked so much, but this is what I need you to take away, guys. Take away that to make a fraction undefined, I turn the denominator into zero. So anything that turns the denominator into zero makes a fraction undefined. All right, you guys. Yalla, awesome. You did hard work with me. Uh, happy learning.